Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and yes, you all knew I was going to be talking about Respawn Entertainment. A great many people were requesting I talk about this, even though I'm a day behind due to the line of sight video and the insane 48 minute long Dirty Devs video that went out last night, but that's neither here nor there. Now, some of you will probably be wondering why I haven't nailed Respawn to the Dirty Devs cross, and I'll preempt the content to this video to explain why I'm leaving them off this time. Now, the reason is, ultimately, because while yes, one of the project leads and a community manager have acted in a very unprofessional manner, they do so out of a combination of frustration and ignorance. Now, I would say stupidity, but I haven't seen enough from either one of them to label them as such quite yet. Actions such as these would be sufficient to place a developer on the dirty devs list, but that would happen if I were able to detect any malice, and I just don't see that here. Pettiness and vindictiveness to be sure, but not malice. That said, I'll go ahead and run through the information we do have, and then I'll explain why I'm labeling these two individuals ignorant as opposed to malicious. Links to any publicly available sources will be in the description down below. Now, all of the uproar is following off at the back of the Apex Legends Iron Crown event. This is a timed event with loot boxes and a $35 new heirloom item, the Raven's Bite Axe. Now, some of the controversy comes about in how these timed loot boxes were brought into being, where if a person wished to obtain the Raven's Bite, they're required to purchase 24 of the Iron Crown packs. Now, these Iron Crown packs cost 700 Apex coins each, or roughly $7, and when you factor in that Respawn Entertainment only allows players to obtain two Iron Crown packs through gameplay, that means that in order to even be able to purchase the item, the player must first buy 22 Iron Crown packs, which would be a minimum of $160 if the player purchased the largest bulk crate on Apex Coins, which is 18,200 Apex Coins. Then, per PC Gamer, then you'd have to scrounge up an additional 700 Apex Coins in order to acquire the Raven's Bite, which is 3,500 coins, effectively $35 by itself. Taking advantage of coin discounts, $170 is the least amount of money you can pay to get this digital hatchet and the other 24 items in the Iron Crown collection. Now, Apex Legends fans did not at all enjoy that monetization model, and that has resulted in a very clear split between fans of the game and two Respawn Entertainment staff members, Respawn's project lead Drew McCoy taking center stage. In response to disgruntled and angry fans, we saw Drew McCoy respond in a very unprofessional manner with, quote, Hey everyone, found the dick I was talking about. Guess what? I didn't even read your comment except for the first sentence and the last. This kind of garbage doesn't warrant a reply, but lucky for you, I already made a comment about this earlier. Go find it. And another statement that read, There is a wealth of data available on how monetization works in free-to-play games, and we ourselves have run tests by putting skins on sale in the store. The amount of people who spend is crazy low. Most of y'all are freeloaders, and we love that. And a change in price doesn't move the needle. And then there was this additional statement where McCoy said, I've been in this industry long enough to remember when players weren't complete asshats to developers, and it was pretty neat. I forged a bunch of long-lasting relationships from back then. Would be awesome to get back there and not engaging with toxic people or asking how high when a mob screams jump is hopefully a start. One not-so-happy Apex Legends player listed all of the full-sized video games that one could buy for $20 right now instead of spending it on a skin, where the community manager, Jfresh, responded with a heavily downvoted, You all should totally buy those games! Great choices! However, owing to the fan backlash, the developers did decide to make some adjustments for players, and starting on August 20th, tomorrow, Respawn Entertainment will begin placing the legendary skins into a weekly rotation on the storefront, where they will be direct purchasable for 1,800 Apex coins, or roughly $18 apiece. And then, a few hours ago, Vince Zampella, the CEO of Respawn Entertainment, posted an official apology on behalf of Respawn Entertainment over his employees' actions, in which he said, On Friday, we gave Apex fans an update on how we were changing the Iron Crown event. Some of our team then joined a discussion with our community on Reddit, and things got to a pretty bad place. Some of our folks crossed a line with their comments, and that's not how we want Respawn to be represented. I apologize to any of our fans that were offended. I will always stand behind the team here at Respawn and support them on speaking out against some of the toxic and nasty comments being directed at them, including everything from death threats to comments aimed at their families and loved ones, but we shouldn't contribute to it when we do comment and add to the very thing we want to prevent. We need to lead by example. Last week we didn't do that, and going forward we will be better. Having an open, healthy relationship with our community is incredibly important to all of us at Respawn. 
And those are the core facts as I'm currently aware of them. And right away, I do have to say that I grow exceptionally tired of seeing death threats, threats against people's families, any threats really on the internet every single time someone says or does something that someone else doesn't like. I get them all the time, and I have no real reason to doubt these developers when they claim they've received the same or similar. The problem is, when people do that sort of thing, they immediately surrender any ethical or moral high ground to the subject of their ire. Not only that, but such actions actively harm others attempting to combat such predatory, because these particular microtransactions damn well are predatory, loot boxes and microtransactions. There's the age-old saying, when you're shouting, you're not listening. And when all you do is shout, sooner or later the other side will resort to shouting just so they can be heard. And that, of course, means that they have stopped listening as well. But I'm not here to just call out those that can't act in a respectable manner or the trolls that employ such tactics merely to fan the flames because there are always going to be a few people that can't think past their own navels and still more that love to sow the seeds of chaos because they want to see the world burn. No, I'm here to talk about the developers and their seeming lack of comprehension as to why people are so upset. First, the concept of the loot boxes themselves and the extremely high cost of these skins. Now, I do understand that this is a free-to-play game, and finances have to come from somewhere. But the largest problem comes from when microtransactions turn into macrotransactions. When the cost of your skins equals the cost of some very good full video games, then the skin price is just too damned high. Now, I have a complaint with microtransactions within the games industry in general surrounding the exorbitant cost of those microtransactions. The reason being is while a full AAA game will cost between $60 and $120 depending on how complete of a game you want, comparatively extremely low effort skins cost far more than they should when compared to the cost of the games they're in. The reason they are that price is because, of course, people are willing to pay it. And as long as people are willing to pay it, the rates will continue to increase until we see games offering up skins for $20 or more. Now, Drew McCoy hit the nail on the head with what their mentality is with the cost on these microtransactions, and I'm actually surprised I haven't seen too many people catch on to it yet. Remember, he said, The amount of people who spend is crazy low. Most of y'all are freeloaders. And a change in price doesn't move the needle. Now that means, of course, two different things. First, making the skins cheaper doesn't seem to entice additional people to purchase them, whereas making them more expensive also doesn't seem to decrease the number being purchased either. So when a business looks at that sort of thing, of course, they will jack up the prices because there is active incentive to do so with little to no drawback. It's completely immoral to do so, of course, and I don't agree with it in the slightest, but you can see when looking at it through a corporate lens why they would do such a thing. Another aspect is this rotating items in and out of the store. They claim this is in order to be more receptive to the players, but all it does is again force purchases due to the limited time span of availability. Applying pressure on the consumer through the buy now it might not be here later practice is a time-honored tradition employed by sleazy salesmen for probably as far back as there were sleazy salesmen to begin with. It's not the developers doing their players any sort of favor, it's merely playing a shell game in order to outdate the outrage. And then there was also the manipulative aspect of timed loot boxes and a direct purchase weapon that could only be obtained after being forced to buy 24 of them. That again falls back on the time-honored shady salesman dirty business practices rulebook. And a lot of that is why players are so enraged, and this is something that these developers either are incapable of or steadfastly refuse to comprehend. And we see that with McCoy's statement, I've been in the industry long enough to remember when players weren't complete asshats to developers, and it was pretty neat. What he fails to realize is the landscape of the industry was very different then. Back then, it was much easier to hold developers to a standard of quality, produce a good and complete game, sell it at a fair price, receive sales and accolades. It's a pretty simple format. However, things are much more complex and, I hate to sound like a broken record, much more predatory than the industry was back then. Now, we do have these shell games, slot machine loot boxes, timed sales events, borderline bait and switch or outright bait and switch attempts, cheat codes being turned into cash cows, and video games being refined from creative works of art into extreme mediocrity in order to create platforms for monetization. Using homogeneity to quote-unquote normalize the decreased level of effort required within AAA cash grabs. These developers see nothing wrong with this, and because of that, they just can't get it through their skulls why people are so disenfranchised with their monetization efforts. But in this case, stupidity seems to be more in line as opposed to avaricious malice, which is the only reason why Respawn Entertainment hasn't ended up on the dirty devs list, because ignorance can be corrected. Greed, more difficult to do so, but not impossible, but malice seems to run to the bone. 
Regardless, it would seem the corporate money hooks are firmly in place, and I don't believe much can be done to shake them loose again. Remember, Electronic Arts did buy Respawn after all. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.